let's talk about dihybrid Punnett squares. Now we're going to get a little fancy in our Punnett squares. Sometimes actually though dihybrids can be um, smaller than a monohybrid Punnett square. And I'll show you that shortcut later on. So let's just refresh our memory. The prefix di means two. So these are Punnett squares with two traits. So we're going to increase the amount of letters that we put in our Punnett square. So again, I have descriptions. This is the same one that we use for the monohybrid practice. So we're looking at those pea plants that Mendel used, and I let you know what the dominant allele variety is and the recessive allele variety is. So let's take a look at question number one. Question number one tells us the genotype for mom and the genotype for dad. And down here then, before we can even set up the Punnett square with a dihybrid, we have to use the law of independent assortment to figure out the possible combinations of G and N that mom can offer in her gametes. So sometimes students get confused when it says possible gametes for mom. So this means the eggs that mom creates during meiosis are going to have one of each letter. They're going to have one G and they're going to have one N. So we need to look at all the possible combination of eggs that she can offer into the Punnett square. And the same thing for dad, his gametes would be called sperm. Now before we do this, I want to show you a little trick that I teach students. I'm not sure if you guys are doing this in math very much anymore, but um, <clears throat> some math students are taught something that's called FOIL. And I'll show you this in an example. So, oops. Many of you have seen this in uh, math class. So when I was younger, and I know a while back at Thomas, they used to teach how to solve one of these expressions by using the acronym FOIL. And what this stands for is first, outer, inner, and last. And so what that means is with these parentheses, when we um, write this out, we use the first in each parentheses and we multiply those together. Then we use the outside of each parentheses and we multiply that together. Then we use the inside of the expression and then we use the last of the expression. I don't know if you have learned it that way, but that's what we call first, outside, inside, and last. And we're going to use that actually to um, figure out all the possible egg and sperm gametes in a dihybrid Punnett square. So let me show you what I mean by that. In the example that we're going to do, the mom has a genotype that looks like this. The law of independent assortment says that the combination of G and N is completely random. So we need to think of all possible combinations of G and N. And remember the law of segregation says that your two alleles that are of the same trait are going to separate into fertilization. So we're going to use this foil. Think of it like this. If I drew a line between those two characteristics, um, in this case the G is going to represent color, green is dominant over yellow, and the letter N is pod shape. Smooth is dominant over uh, constricted, which means wrinkly. So I'm actually going to do my first, outer, inner, last. So the first on each of my traits is a big G and a big N. The outside is a big G, little n. The inside is a little G, big N. And the last is a little G, little n. I do think this is helpful when you go to set up your Punnett square because then you can really make sure you have all of the possible combinations. So let's take that back and apply it to the dihybrid on the practice worksheet. So here was mom. She's exactly what we just did. If I kind of put a line there, I can see here's my first big G, big N. My outside is a big G, little n. My inside is a little g, big n. And the last one is a little g, little n. 
And that's what I'm going to put in my Punnett square. Those are all the possible egg combinations that she can offer. And if we look at dad, this is kind of easy. Dad is the exact same genotype as mom, so we just have to write it again for dad. He is going to have the same possible combinations. And then in a dye hybrid, we're going to complete the Punnett square just like we did before. However, you want to go a little bit slower because you're going to pull this information down and this information over, but you want to put it together so that your G's are together and your N's are together. So you don't want to write G, N, G, N. That's going to be really hard to analyze down here at the end when we have to answer these analysis questions. So instead, take a moment and kind of glance at both of the ideas, both of the um, gametes. Oops, I was about to do it. <laughs> and then you're going to write the G's together and the N's together. I'm going to do the next one down. So I have two big G's, a big N, and a little N. And again, I'm going to try to keep those dominants in front of the recessive. And let's look at this one. So I have a dominant G and a recessive G. I still want to keep the G's together, even though that's a recessive in front of a dominant, because I have two dominant N's, because that G really has no effect on the letter N. The G's go together, and they talk about uh, color. The N's go together, and they talk about shape. And so you can continue to fill out the Punnett square. Again, kind of take your time when you're writing it so you can glance at all of your options. And there we have a dye hybrid Punnett square. Okay, these, are, these are tricky. They're not quite the same as monohybrids. They can be a little cumbersome. As you can see, this is a lot bigger. So you definitely want to take your time and go slow. Okay, let's look at our analysis questions here. Um, in these analysis questions, instead of asking for a percentage, I am asking for a fraction. So if we look at the total, the total offspring in this Punnett square is 16. That means my fractions will all be out of 16. And I put fraction because I don't know about you. It's hard for me to calculate percent if I'm looking out of 16. <laughs> so that's why I did it like that. Okay, so now let's look at the characteristics. The first one is green with smooth pea pods. If you go back up to your little data table up here, green and smooth are both dominant. So I'm looking for at least one big G and one big N. So I'm going to kind of look, and I'm going to check them off as I go so I can go back and count. So here's a big G and a big N, a big G and a big N, a big G and a big N, a big G and a big N. Doesn't matter what the second letter is because of the law of dominance. Big G, big N, big G, but not a big N, so I cannot count that. Big G, big N, nope. Recessive ends, can't count that one. Big G, big N, big G, big N. Oh, little G's, little G's, can't count those. Big G, big N, little N's, little G's. So I think that's all. Let me count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine out of 16 are going to be dominant, dominant. Now let's look at um, yellow and smooth. So smooth is still dominant, but yellow is recessive. And in order to get that, I have to be little g, little g. So I'm going to look at the boxes that I have not checked off yet. And I'm looking for two little g's and at least one big N. So here's one. Here's one, little g and a big N. And here's one, little g and a big N. So I have three out of the 16 that are recessive in one category and dominant in the other. And then let's look at the opposite. Green is dominant, so I just need at least one big G, 
g, excuse me, and constricted is recessive, so I need two little n's. So let's take a look there. Here's one, a big G and little n's, big G and little n's, big G and little n's, and this is all little, so I can't count that. So I had three of those stars. So I had three out of 16. Now the one thing I was missing was recessive, recessive. So yellow and constricted would be this last little guy left, and that would be one out of 16. Okay, so definitely a bit more cumbersome with these dihybrid Punnett squares. Um, this might be a good opportunity for you to pause the video and you go ahead and work on the second dihybrid and then unpause the video when you think you're done and double check your answers with mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Go ahead and pause and challenge yourself. When I see you again, we will talk about possible shortcuts. This particular Punnett square does not have any shortcuts because the mom and dad were heterozygous for both traits. But this um, Punnett square down here does have potential for shortcuts, and it's always a clue if you look at the fraction, and if you can reduce that fraction, then there's probably a good chance that we can actually reduce the size of a dihybrid Punnett square. But I'll talk about that more the next time I see you.